You know, this is a race for our dignity, mm -hmm. our self-respect, mm -hmm. yeah. the days of trying to beg white men to appoint us to a committee and let that be the extent of our race is over. That's right. It's over. That's right. All right. So we wanted to get some strong black person with some Aye. spine to go mm -hmm. forward and get in this city council race. Right now, just so that you know, only the council members can vote for speaker. Mm -hmm. It's 51 Kent City Council members. So whoever gets 26 votes wins. And what has happened traditionally, the Democratic Party bosses get together and they have control over all of the city council members in their borough. Because why? All of them are part of the Democratic Party machine that helps them get elected, gives them money, make sure they get on the ballot. So whatever the boss says, that's what you do. So the boss in Queens is Crowley. Joe Quart Crowley, the congressman. There are 14 council members in Queens. He got a lock on them. There are eight council members in the Bronx. Marcos Crespo is the county leader for the Bronx, a Latino brother. He has eight. Keith Wright is the boss in Manhattan, mm -hmm. who doesn't have any control over the Manhattan folk. He has <laughs> ten. In Brooklyn, white man, Frank Setio, mm -hmm. there are 16 <laughs> council members in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So all the two white boys got to do is get together, mm -hmm. 16 and 14 is 30, they only have to talk right. to you and they pick the next council member, speaker. Or if Queens, 14, gets together with the Bronx, eight, that's 22, they get the three Republicans from Staten Island, that's 25, and then they get Corey Johnson, 26, and that's it. So why is the speaker's race so important? The speaker is the second most powerful position in the city. Mm -hmm. The second most powerful position in the city to the mayor is the speaker of the city council. The speaker gets the city council members to pass the budget. The $85 billion budget that the mayor is going to propose, it is the city council that passes that, not the, spe not the uh, mayor. Mm -hmm. He just proposes it. The speaker picks all the chairs for all the committees and all of the council members that will sit on the committees. So if you think you're getting a chair that's going to make you so powerful, but I got news for you, buddy, because if you are a chair of land use, which is a powerful committee, and finance, which is a powerful committee, the speaker picks all the members of that committee. So if you don't vote the speaker's way, the chair, she will get the committee members, or he will get the committee members to vote against you. Mm -hmm. The speaker controls all of that. We had the Fresh Democracy Council when I first came in. We made some rule changes because the speaker used to tell you how much capital money you're going to get for your district and how much programmatic money you're going to get for programs in your district and how much money you're going to get for your staff. How many of you would go against the speaker of that power? <laughs> if you was in that, you would say, hey, Charles, thanks for getting me elected, but uh, I got to get something for my community. I got to get something for my people. And they start cutting deals, cutting deals. So this time around, we said, you know, when the city council started, it was all white people had the city council presidencies. Then they turned it to a speaker position. You remember Peter Vallone? Mm -hmm. He was the city council speaker, powerful from Queens, white man. Y'all remember Gifford Miller? He was another city council speaker, white man. And by the way, he was a less qualified white man. That's when I first came in, 2002. I said, you know, what about Al Van? Al Van just came out of the state assembly, you know, had the credentials. Now a city council member. What about Bill Perkins? Mm -hmm. He was in there. You go with Gifford Miller? No, nobody even heard of him. That's right. If that. you had the credentials of Gifford Miller, they'd kick you out of the city council. 
They were far more qualified, but the bosses said no. A white man from Manhattan. So we didn't get it. The next time around, here comes Christine Quinn. Mm -hmm. A white woman from Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I said to the council members then, I said, come on, y'all. It is 27 of us, 27 when I was in there, 14 blacks, 11 Latinos, and two Asians. I said, come on, y'all. Later for the bosses, free yourself. Run off the plantation. You can do it. I couldn't get them to run. I said, one of you run. Tish James, you run. I don't want to. They might punish me <laughs> if I don't win. <laughs> Leroy Comrie, why don't you run? No, I ain't getting punished. <laughs> None of them wanted to run. So you know what I did? I said, later for this, I'm running. I'm, some of you were in the balcony. <laughs> when I made my speech, I said, I'm running. Because what they do, even when they put their hat in the ring, or their scarf in the ring, what they do, is they do it so they can negotiate for right, a chair. Exactly. Not to be speaker, to negotiate Talk for a chair. Mm -hmm. So I ran. I almost won. It was a close race, 48 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> I came close. <laughs> but I went, I went all the way. Mm -hmm. All the way. I didn't be afraid I might not get a chair. I might get punished. They told me, Charles, if you go all the way, you're going to get punished. Bring it. Yeah. Bring it. My dignity, my self-respect, my pride is more than your little chick. So I ran. I got the one vote. I think it should have been a weighted vote. That should have counted for 50, and I would have had it. But after that, I said, come on, y'all. We need to get it next time. You have a black and Latino caucus, if they would unite, they got the 26. So now here comes the Working Families Party. <laughs> here comes the Working Families Party, the diversity at the bottom and the white at the top. <laughs> they come and start this progressive caucus. They say that the black and Latino caucus, are oh, they weak. Come on, Jemani. Come on, Tish. Mm -hmm. Come on, Melissa. Y'all join the progressive caucus with your $1,500 that you have to pay. Join the Progressive Caucus. The Progressive Whites only had six people. We had 26. So they start pulling them away, and then they now became the leverage for Speaker because they pulled all of that power away from the caucus. So who would they decide? A Latina. Melissa Mark B. Burrito. They negotiated with the bosses and they got angry at me because I didn't say we don't want to go from one master, the bosses, the, the, the bosses, to Bob Masters, who's head of the Working Families Party. The three white boys that control the Working Families Party is Bob Masters, mm -hmm. Dan Canton, mm -hmm. and Lipton, Bill Lipton. That's the three white boys that head up the Working Families Party. They decided, Melissa, now check this out. Under my nemesis, Christine Quinn, fought her every day. Yes, she did. Fought her every day. So we need a black, we need a black person head of land use. We never had one. She gave in, we got Comrie. Now we didn't really get a black person, but we got Comrie. <laughs> <laughs> we got Comrie. Yeah. We did get Comrie. And then we got a black man to head up the Education Committee, Robert Jackson, remember him? Yes. Head of Education. We got a black woman to head up the Ethics Committee, um, uh, Inez Dickens in Harlem. And we got a Latina, your son, Joe, Latino, your son, Joe Rivera, to be the majority leader. By the way, give uh, Jose Rivera my assembly Jose's son was the majority leader. This is what we had under my nemesis, Christine Quinn. The Latina gets in under the guy leadership of the Working Families Party. All four of them turn to white men. We lose those four seats under the Latina. So now we come now. 
All right, you had white men, you had white women, you had a Latina, they all, communities got theirs. It's our turn now. That's right. It's our turn now. It's our turn now. Our turn now. Here comes uh, Carnegie and, and others saying they're running and running, and we say, okay, we're, we ain't crazy about y'all either, but, you know, you're black, so we're going to give you a play and let's right. see what happens. Right. They disrespect us. They never get back to us. Are you going to go all the way, brother? I got to get back to you. Are you, you know, I want finance chair. I said, brother, you know, if you get finance chair, it appears to be a powerful position. You will not have the power over the finances, over the budget. You'll just be facilitating because she'll have that, or he'll have that committee staff. Now, Corey Johnson, I'm not going to get into people's personal stuff, but he is far from qualified. Oh, far from it. I mean, far from it. Yeah. I mean, Real far from <laughs> far from qualified. I just don't want to get into no personal attacks, but he's far from qualified. Y'all say far from qualified. Far from qualified. Way down the road. So, uh, and then you have the other guys running. So we couldn't get them to say, brother, stick to the end. Go all the way to January 3rd. Get up on the floor. Make the stance for your people. Yes. Make the stance for your people mm -hmm. and say that I'll go to the end. So they didn't want to do it, but we got somebody tonight who's willing to do it. All right, come on. So I just wanted to give you all that brief history. This is about our pride. They'll say, well, I just thought so late. We was giving them a chance. That's right. Yeah. They'll say, come on, you know you can't get the votes. Let me tell you something. Maybe we can. We should try. You know, when you get That's in this right. race, right. you just try anyway. That's right. We got seven days after tomorrow to convince those black and Latino members to opt out of their deals, come back to the people, and do the right thing and vote for our candidate for city council. We're going to work them. We're going to go to Harlem and work them. We're going to go to the Bronx and work them. We are going to go to all of those places and work those people. And on January 3rd, we'll see who got heart, we'll see who got spine, and we'll see who's buck dancing, shuffling, yeah. and unwilling to take a stance for their people. This is about the dignity of a people. So I'm going to kick it to Viola. She's going to introduce our candidate, and we're going to go from there. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. <laughs> What I want us to dig on though, right? I want us to say every borough, right, mm -hmm. has a city council person. That's right. Every one of those bosses sit on top of black city council people. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that if we want to rock the machine, All right, now. Mm -hmm. it's got to be at that level. That's right. We have got to go back to our particular boroughs. Like we called up Donnie Miller in Queens and said, Crowley didn't vote for you because he ain't in your district. Mm -hmm. We right. did. That's right. And I know you owe your life's blood to him, but 2018 is coming. And I, I want us to, to, to like get to that because just listen to me. The Democratic Party, the Democratic Party gave us Donald Trump. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, you all hear what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. gave yeah. us Trump. Yeah. Why? Because they said Hillary Clinton is it. Mm -hmm. the, this, what this person is it. It's Hillary Clinton, Hillary. Hillary is it. Hillary is it. Black folks going for it, everybody's going for it, doesn't matter. Hillary Clinton is it. But the people on the ground, right, and we could call them all kind of names, but their position is we don't like this woman. Mm -hmm. We do not like her. 
Yeah. And her husband. She raped <laughs> Haiti. Her and her husband. Her and her husband. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She yeah. killed Gaddafi. Yeah. Talk about right? it. Right? Yeah. Talk about it. That yeah. she was the hawk in the Democratic Party. Right? right. right? Yeah. She was the hawk. She united with taking our jobs away, doing this and doing all the rest of it. So those people on the ground, yeah, they were white, uneducated if you want, blah, 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 but they knew she wasn't in their interest. So they got together, the Democratic Party, as arrogant, right? And, and disrespectful as they are, played right past it. That's why I'm saying we got Trump. That's why we got Trump. But we can't allow the Democratic Party, and be clear, y'all, be clear. We may not win this one. And hear me, I'm saying may not. But what's the other side of that? We dialect That's right. All right? But it's got to be, it's got to be, as my son Robert used to say, shuffle your kidneys up here. Shuffle your kidneys up here. When, when, and, and we should engage. You know what I mean? We should engage. We should know our city council person. Right? Because every one of them come from a 98.99% black councilmanic district. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crowley don't come from it. Nope. I don't know where Crespo comes from. Cesspool. Right? But if it's Latino, then it's 99% Latino because white people don't run except in their own communities and do that. So I want us to be clear. When we leave, when we leave here, that we are clear that, we, that the bosses is not going to, at least to us, Tell us who is going to lead the city council. Y'all with that? Yes. Yes. All right. yes. So that wherever you're from, get your council person's name. And, and listen, they're going to say, you got the votes, right? And all you have to say is, oh, they voted already? Mm -hmm. right. I thought the voting was January the 3rd. How Bill de Blasio was on the thing? Yes, congratulations. Congratulating somebody. Yeah. How you do that? Yeah. Right, he ain't even had a vote. Yeah. The way in which he did it, mm -hmm. white man, yeah. he decided. Any of y'all ever hear Johnson? No. I never did. And they say he, one of his claim to fame is the, in the AIDS Foundation. Well, I tell you what. I had a colleague that worked in the AIDS Foundation, and the contradiction in there was black men who had AIDS were at the bottom of the barrel. Of I never heard of Corey Johnson. Right. Of you understand where I'm coming from? So listen, listen. We are going to be very clear, and we want our, our candidate on New York 12 or Brooklyn 12 or whatever that is, so that I'll, I'll cut to the chase. I'll cut to the chase, but we're going to come back. That's right. We're going to come back, and we're going to hit the ground with mm -hmm. our council people. And you know where I come from. It's like straight up from me. You're going to vote. See what I mean? I mean, right? right. Mm -hmm. Crowley and them dangle stuff. Right? right. right? So we got to dangle what we got. Oh, it's Y'all know who I'm talking about, right? Bring them on. Bring them on. Y'all know Bring who I'm talking speaker. about. Right? Next speaker. Next speaker. Right now. Sit down. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so much. Yeah. Thank you, I Madam first Speaker. have to say that it's so important that we're here at the House of the Lord Church, this historic church. Look on the walls and you see the history of the struggle and the history that this church has been in the leadership of. So we're so pleased that we're here at the House of the Lord Church. You know, someone said it's kind of late. Well, I'm offering myself because no one else was willing to say that they would go all the way. No one else was willing to say that they wouldn't compromise the push for being speaker by accepting a plum chair position of a, polic of a select committee. No one else was willing to do that. I think that we are deserving of the opportunity to stand on the floor of the chambers and say, there is a black candidate. Because there's certain people here who from the time that I was elected four years ago mm -hmm. said, why don't you run for speaker? That's right. My position was always, I will get behind whoever it is that the body brings forth as their candidate. We have a long way to go, mm -hmm. because the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, as you have heard, has 26 members who couldn't come together and say, couldn't even say, we want a Black or Latino candidate. Couldn't even make that statement. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the consciousness for these people raised, and where we can't raise this consciousness, we need to get the fire under them, right. and tell them that there are consequences, but they don't stand up for our people people are deserving. And I'm here to say that I'm here for a paradigm shift. Right. I'm here to shift the way it has always done, right. and I'm following in what my predecessor, right. now Assemblymember Charles <laughs> Barrett, did. Because this is what he did. He told you. He asked the people when he was there, you run, I'll back you. You run, I'll back you. You run, I'll back you. None of them were willing to do that. So when he offered his name himself, there was not even one who was willing to second his wow. self-nomination. Wow. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. I'm offering myself because our children, my grandsons are here, Solomon and Osa are here, my son and his wife are here, they need to know that we're not in this to jockey for positions and get a chair for ourselves. We're in it to say that we're qualified to be the speaker yes. and we're going to stand on the floor and make you count our votes. Shirley Chisholm gave us the example of what we should do. She went around the country. She knocked on doors. She presented herself and she said, I'm running for president. She did it and she set that model back then. Here we are in 2017, almost 2018, and we don't have someone who's willing to say, I want to be speaker. I'm going to present myself. If I get one vote, two, three, whatever I get, I'm going to be on the record to have that done. Right. If we can't get that, then we have not been able to stand on the legacy yes. of the great people who were here before us, who gave their lives, who sacrificed, who said it doesn't matter if you, quote, punish me, and that's the word, unfortunately, that they use. Yeah. It doesn't matter that you plan to punish me. I'm going to stand up for our people. I'm going to stand up for our dignity. I'm going to stand up to say that this is the way that we should go. Jeez. So for those of you who don't know, my background is 37 years with the Board of Education. That's right. Come on. Come on. And a part of that time, I was the executive assistant to the superintendent, which meant that I was his liaison to the principals in about 25 schools. So I know how to deal with people who are in other equal positions, who have a responsibility that they have to report to me as that person, or that we coordinate and come together. Mm -hmm. The speaker has a lot of authority. Yes, right. We know they talk about the equity gap in terms of income, jobs, employment, all of that. The person who is a speaker has an opportunity to offer initiatives, mm -hmm. to design programs, right. to help correct the shortages that exist. As a black speaker, Absolutely. I can promise you that I will do much to close that equity no, gap. No, I will do much to close that equity gap. The equity gap that exists in housing, mm -hmm. in health care, mm -hmm. in education, yeah, that's right. and they talk about criminal justice talk reform, I will make it an issue to talk about our political prisoners. My talk God. about those right. persons yeah. who have been incarcerated on our behalf for decades that people have put to the side and
and have not brought, put on the table. I can do that because I will be the speaker, and I will create that kind of platform that will allow those issues to come forth. Oh my God. I want to be able to say to you, what I'm doing is at your request, yes. at your support, mm -hmm. at your insistence, and that I'm willing to go forward to be that servant leader, to serve you, and to lead the city council as your speaker. Yeah. Now, yeah. what can we Here do we now? Go. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. What do we do? Brother, to what do we do next? Where are you from? Bedside. Where? Joe Gonzalez. Joe who? Joe Gonzalez. No. Who's your council person? I'm so sorry. I'm Corn stuck with Robert Carnegie. Okay. <laughs> you, tomorrow morning at Carnegie's door, you are there. I don't care where he lives. You're at his door tomorrow morning, knocking on the door, telling him he's going to support. I'm as bad. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, see, minimally, y'all, if it's real, then you got to show. Mm -hmm. For real now, you know, clapping and, you know, right. you know, that ain't going to get it. Right. It's not going to get it. You heard Inez said that Shirley went through the whole oh, country, mm -hmm. right? Well, we can go through these little five boroughs, right. right? And we say to our council people, mm -hmm. you are going to support who we want you to because we elected you. Right. Let me tell you all something. You know, I mean, Come on. Power concedes nothing without a demand. Say that again. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean nothing. We will say to our council people, we elected you to represent us, not Crowley in Queens. Because we're going to see Donovan. You know, we'll go see Steph. See, because y'all ain't, y'all, I mean, y'all ain't timid, right? No. And, and let me tell you, and it's not against the law to lobby your council person for your issue. It ain't against the law. It, it ain't breaking nothing. It's, you, that's your right. You can lobby your council person mm -hmm. for your issue. That's right. You really can. No matter where he is, in the restaurants, right? When he step out of church, wherever he is, you can lobby him. But if there's no heat, if there's no heat, if three people go see one of them really upstanding, uh, <laughs> strong, black, Latino council members, three, Right? They begin to waver. Mm -hmm. And that's all we need them to do. We need them to waver. We need them to go look at these white men and say, check, the natives are restless. Yes. <laughs> right? So then, the voters, December, January 3rd, that's right. all right? Two days later, win, lose, or draw, we're going to be back here. Right. Yep. I don't hear you. Yes. And let me tell you why we're going to be back here. Because whoever the speaker, even if it's Inez, we are going to see Inez. And we are going to say to her, we want land use. We want finance. We want the whip. We want to be the Democratic leader. Right? And we want the chief of staff. Right. Y'all hear that? Yes. Yes. I see some of y'all is very quiet, so I don't yes. know what that means. Do y'all hear that? Yes. Come on now. This is not about, you know, we come here 
and, and clap. This is a show not take up what you clap for. Your pride, your blackness, your whatever. That's what this is, right? That's what we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be doing in here. So, whatever your questions, however you got to deal with it, what you think you don't know, then come on, ask it. And I don't know any of it, but Charles Barron knows all of it. So ask what you don't know, and we know you know it all, brother. I see you everywhere I go. So nod, and I know your question. We want to hear some other people, like that sister with a candle. This one. Oh, this one. Imani. Yeah. <laughs> huh? So, <laughs> Imani's from Atlanta. <laughs> Not the last. The last time I saw her, right. she and I was working a campaign. That's right. So it ain't like working the campaign. That's right. Right. So come on, somebody. Question. Let me just acknowledge a few people while you're thinking about your question. Minister Henry Muhammad. From there he is. There he is. That's right. There he is. Any questions? I got a question. Yes. Why don't you take this uh, to City Hall? Take what? It's moving. We up. We up. No, I mean before the third. Why don't you have a press conference on the steps we and thought announce about it? That, having a press conference on the steps of city. We were thinking about doing that tomorrow on Wednesday, but we wanted to drum up more support. Mm -hmm. So that's in the thinking. Mm -hmm. but, 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 and, and is it also that we each have to be calling people? So the steps of right. City Hall is to talk to the press, but what we want here is for each one of us to go back, talk and talk and talk and talk and talk to, to get the ground shaking. Because right. we don't want to be on the steps of City Hall by ourselves. <laughs> yeah. You know, people say, why don't you go to City Hall? Oh, I can't make it. I got to go back. You know, so we just want to make sure we build the momentum. We were going to announce that. You know, tonight that tomorrow morning we'll be on the steps of City Hall, but we want to see where you're coming from because we got the idea, and we definitely are taking it to City Hall. To do the work that we have to do over the next few days, are there two or three talking points that you want all of us to say so that it's to the council people that we're going to be calling, seeing, running into, whatever? Yeah, we can I talk. mean, it just seems to make sense if there are just right. two or three. So one, this is a movement that's going to go beyond the third, okay. so we can have our respect and dignity. Two, it's our turn now to be the city council. We have been given up on the possibility of loosening up all of those deals that were made, so we're going to put some pressure on for the next seven days. And three, we want everybody to be with us because this is a candidate that's going all the way, not cutting any deals, because we have never had a black speaker it's our turn now, and we'll be there on the third to make that point. Are there other candidates in the race? Because only two, and if you don't get 26, how does that shake out? No, right now, basically, they say they have all the votes. They say they got 35 votes, and that's the insult. Nobody voted yet. The way they, the way they projected it on television, you would have thought the voting took place already. Right. The voting doesn't take place to the third. They claim they got commitments over 30 some odd people. We don't know anything. We know now that there are nobody has been voted for and on the voting will take place on the third. We have a candidate that all the women in the city council should support. All the black people in the city council should support. All the Latino people in the city council support. And if there are any white people of goodwill, they should support it too. That's right.